Caribbean Chronicles by Liesl, getting around in Martinique. Whenever I travel, I love to use public transport. There are several reasons why I do this. Number one is the fact that it's quite economical and it reduces my travel expenses. Number two is the fact that it affords me the opportunity of making authentic connections. And I don't want to pass up on that because I don't know who's going to be where and when. And that's part of my travel experience. So coming to Martinique, I was like, okay, I want to go to this place, this place, this place, and I'm staying in La Montaigne, so how do I get there? I got to my Airbnb and I asked, and the first question I was asked in return was, are you driving? And I was like, no. I mean, I have a driver's license, but I don't drive back home, so I don't intend to do it elsewhere, except I have to. So <laughs> the answer I received was, you know what, there's a bus stop and the bus comes when it comes. So on this episode, I'm going to talk to you about my experience on getting around in Martinique. Maybe you will find some tips that will be helpful for you. And I will also be sharing with you part of my commute from La Montaigne to Fort de France and also a bit of the ferry experience. So let's start at number one. Number one is public transport. And by that, I mean the commute I had between La Montaigne to Fort de France. In my case, I had to walk 10 minutes from my Airbnb to the bus stop. At the bus stop, I had the opportunity of taking two buses. One, the government bus. The second one, private minivans that ran the same stops as the government bus. For the private minivans, it was like two euros from uh, La Montaigne to Fort de France. And for the government buses, like the stops that I saw, they were vending machines and you could buy your ticket there. There was a ticket for 145. I don't exactly know what that ticket was for. I don't know if it was a short trip or whatever because the description was in French. But they're vending machines and you can get your tickets from the vending machine. The interesting thing to note about these two options is they don't actually run all through the day. So say for instance, you were gonna go for dinner and needed to come back. <laughs> that might not be the way that you can come back. And that's where taxis come in. Um, there are other buses that probably cover uh, regional commute and to, you know, other different areas of Martinique. I didn't use this, but I saw them. So um, if you need that information, you'd be best checking that out online or on site when you were there. But for other places I had to go to or for returning back at night, that's where number two comes in, the taxis. What I found very strange in Martinique is that, remember I said I walked 10 minutes from my Airbnb to the um, bus stop? During this 10 minutes, I never saw a taxi. So you know how you'd be in a city and you're walking and the taxi's driving by or there's a taxi stand? I saw only one taxi stand in Martinique and that was at Fort de France. And um, I never really saw a taxi drive by me. So it would either mean that, yes, of course, they obviously have taxis, and they have very few taxi stands and the ones they have are packed somewhere maybe in their houses and they've put their contact details online and when you call them they come and get you so literally what i did was i went to the taxi stand at fort the france got a taxi guy's number but also the night that i wanted to go to le cloud i kind of called a taxi that i had found online and then he referred me to another taxi that was in the la Montaigne area so he came and got me, and that was the guy I finally used for the three times I used a taxi service. Bear this in mind, because you're not flagging them down where you're standing or something, they kind of like charge you the fare of coming to you and then taking you to where you need to go. So it's an option, but it could become a pricey one. So I took the taxi to the restaurant, to the airport, and coming back from a night out. So it is an option that you can use. At number three, the ferries. The ferries are a good way to get from Fort de France to Choisilly and return. I think they have a schedule, I didn't see one, um, but I waited quite a bit to get on the ferry going alongside with other people. And then there is the risk that because maybe there are a lot of people and it didn't come that often, you might not be able to get on the first ferry that comes. In my case, it worked both ways. I was able to board going after the long wait and also board return. Um, in this case, I didn't wait that long because I was at Ansmitan and I had asked when the ferry was coming and I could see the pair. So 
I was kind of like prepared <laughs> for when it would show up and it was okay. So you might just want to check um, if there is a schedule and um, if you'll be able to get on the one you want to get on. So th that's it for the ferries. At number four is obviously driving yourself. If you have a driver's license, like to drive, then rent a car and you'd probably be more mobile than any other of the options that I've listed apart from the ferry. Um, then at number five, this is a very interesting one. Now, because the people of Martinique know how magnificent their public transport is, they've incorporated hitchhiking into a means of getting around in Martinique. So much so that um, it's common. But the interesting thing about hitchhiking in Martinique is that you don't do this, you do this. <laughs> so if all hell breaks loose and you have no other option, just know that in Martinique you can put on a smile and point in that direction and hopefully someone is going to pick you. I mean, I would not do it at night, but just knowing that it's an option that the people of Martinique are used to may be helpful for you. So let's go on ahead and see what my commute was like going from uh, La Montaigne to Fort de France and also a bit of the ferry experience. Bonjour, madame. Monsieur, <laughs> so I'm trying to go to town now and head to Troisile. I will take the ferry. Um, <clears throat> I hope today remains dry. I don't know for hundred percent if it will remain dry, but um, I will try to see. Oh God, <laughs> a bit more today, and <clears throat> I'm already going up this, and I feel my hips. Oh yeah, and again. I need money. I don't have any more cash. So, who? Lord have mercy. I need money. Um, go wait for the cars to pass, and then, um, yeah, no cars are coming. Gosh. <laughs> so it's a ten minutes walk to the CCP or I know how they say it uh, part of which is this very fruitful um, hike up the road yeah we just we just did that then we we just did that huh. Huh. I'm seeing some cows for the first time let me show you the cows. I was wondering why this place was fenced off. It must be some sort of a farm or something. Who? Yeah. Martinique cows, huh? You see them? And as usual, the egret is there to keep him company. And like I said, most of the road does not have like a sidewalk. So you're kind of walking on the road. And then when they're double passing, you almost have to kind of like disappear into somewhere because there is no place for you to walk and there's no place for the car to pass so yeah c'est la vie it is what it is there you see like the incline on that road so everybody has a car a bike a means of getting around but just not taxis not public transport um absolutely banana but yeah was wollen wir machen? Nicht. Außer, ja, das hört man, ne? Okay, I'll show you a bit of the main road and then I'll put you away and then we can um, go up and down and up and down uh, to where we're going. There is no footpath. You see how close this one is driving to me? Tell them. You did not see me when you were looking. Okay. So, now I have to walk on this road and there is no food path, not really. There's a little bit of something. See the guys on the other side of the road, but it's not much. Apparently it's common to hitchhike here. <laughs> I, I honestly do not trust myself to hitchhike in a city. But they say people take you. I just, I don't know. I find it really awkward that that's the solution uh, uh, the French government 
seems to deem fit for its people uh, that they hitchhike instead of putting proper transportation. And look at it, that's where I need to walk. I don't have anywhere else to walk. I'm literally walking right next to the highway and they're driving quite fast, so anything can happen. So it's like you're pre-programmed to um, have an accident because, oh, thank you. You're pre-programmed to kind of like have an accident because they did not make provision for you and they, but they have a lot of this uh, crossing sign. So a lot of places you have to cross the road, but you don't really have anywhere to walk on the road. Um, I'm gonna show you what I mean. There's a part of this road where there's literally no footpath and I'm walking beside the cars, which is literally very dangerous. And um, if I wanted to hike, that road says Fort de France, I would have to put out my finger and hope someone takes me, but uh, not doing it. I know where the bus goes, so I'm gonna go over to the bus. I'm gonna take the bus like I've been doing. I thought I would try it, but <laughs> I guess I'm chicken and I don't really like the idea of being reliant on an absolute stranger to get me to where I'm going to. Which I have done, but it's not an absolute stranger. You've talked to them. Hitchhiking is literally stopping a random person that, you know, you don't know to take you somewhere. And uh, I'm not open for that. Oh, I think I need to cross. Thank you. I need to cross. And uh, there is a walkway on the other side. I will go. You better stop because I'm not about to run into heaven for you. Um, anyways. So you see that side of the road has no walkway. That's where I usually walk down. But this one has, I just read now, I recognize that. So I'm gonna walk on this side and hope to feel a bit safer. But I wanted you to get a bit of La Montaigne, the buses, the cars, the people. That's um, one of the major shopping areas. Um, yeah. So let's continue and I show you in front of it and I put this away long enough for people not to stare. These buses, I think, do like regions. So that's not the one I'll be taking. They call that regions or something. And I'll show you the front of some steakhouse. Um, here and there that bar. This is Hippopotamus Steakhouse. Always busy. I've never been in it because I'm not a steak fan um, But we're gonna cross There's the crossing. I told you that there's crossing everywhere And there's the La Galeria. Galeria. I can show you from uh, well, There's crossing everywhere, but I'm about to climb a plant to cross this one um, Okay So we're going to um, cross at the crossing if they really recognize what it's supposed to be and not try to run me over, which this one's trying to do. Um, but anyways, I will get to the bus stop and I'll show you that in a second. So you see where the bus stop is and then we'll get the bus if it's coming. Ooh, car coming on different levels and then I'll put you away. Ma'am, you're right in front of me. Um, so, ah, there's the Galeria, that's the shopping mall. Uh, oh, there you go. It's here, but I'm too late. So it's just about leaving. Um, that's it up there. Uh, but I will get the next one, which probably comes in five years. Uh, that's all good. And I do need a bag showing you a bit of my way and Martinique I'm going to my favorite spot as I've been accused of Fort de France and um, yeah let's see uh, I don't know what he said but um, let's see maybe I will get a Two euro taxi, I don't have any money on me, so I cannot even take the two euro taxi. Haha! <laughs> oh, I got 10 euros, I got 10 euros. There's the stop. I just left. I don't know 
when the next one's coming but I'll show you a bit of that just says the date doesn't say the time okay should I tell you how long so it's 8 36 tick tock tick tock see how long it takes me to get on the next one so we have arrived I bought my ticket actually I think I should I feel like I should cross over and go get some money but um anyway I think there might be places for me to get money on the other side and there you see ferry to the beach so he it's seven euros I think it's seven euros no matter where you're going so um this one said Boc de Trois Ilets, so three islands Pung de Brot is one of the like the uh further most point so this is where I'm going and oh they are three ships docked today so I want to show you those and then wait for it to come I don't I did not get a departure time when it's leaving but let me show you the boats wow oh this is a nice view oh, show you. okay that looks like it's raining there can you see that but it still gives the, the impression of a nicer drier weather today I wish I could charge this I will find uh, some way to charge it ah look crabs the crabs <laughs> and they're running away um yeah so there you go and they're coming so there will be a lot of business for people today i guess and this is martinique from the pair where we take the boat to the other side i do hope you've enjoyed this episode and the tips you've heard and seen will help you get around in martinique thank you very much for watching yours truly liesl 81